Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. This is our regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Yom Kippur. The Day of Atonement is celebrated 10 days after the Feast of Trumpets, which was celebrated last week Sunday. The Day of Atonement will be celebrated on the 5th of October, 2022. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is easily Israel's most high holy day. It is the day of fasting, a day of mourning. The scripture says that it is a day to afflict yourself. It was the day when the sins of the nation was atoned for with the blood of goats and bulls, and it was rolled over for another year. Let us refresh our memories with the scripture, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26 through 32. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Now on the tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be for you a time of holy convocation, and you shall afflict yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. And you shall not do any work on that very day, for it is a day of atonement to atone for you before the Lord your God. For whoever is not afflicted on that very day shall be cut off from his people. And whoever does any work on that very day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall not do any work. It is a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest and you shall afflict yourselves. On the ninth day of the month, beginning at evening, from evening to evening shall you keep your Sabbath. Ten days after Rosh Hashanah comes the Day of Atonement. It is a somber, ritualistic day, a day of fasting, and the only day that the high priest was allowed to go into the most holy place or the holy of holies, according to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 2. The most holy place was separated from the holy place by a thick veil, per Exodus chapter 26, verse 33. And the high priest was the only one who was allowed to go in, and he only once a year, the day of atonement. He could only go in with the blood of animals. Every time he went in there on that day of atonement, he had to go with the blood of a, of a bull and a goat. Jesus, however, entered the Holy of Holies with his own blood, according to the scriptures, Hebrews chapter 9, verse, verse 6 through 7. These preparations having thus been made, the priests go regularly into the first section, performing their ritual duties, but into the second only the high priest goes, and he but once a year, and not without taking blood which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. This is how the day started for the high priest according to Leviticus chapter 16. This is how it started. The people would gather outside in the courtyard, each one remembering their sins and fasting and praying. No one was allowed to go into the temple while the high priest was ministering inside. He selected a bull from the herd for a sin offering and also a ram for a burnt offering. He was to bathe his body in water and then put on the holy linen garments. Only, I mean, he was to bathe his body in water and then put on the holy linen garments along with the linen undergarments. Then he was to tie the linen sash around his waist and put on the linen turban on his head. These things are all symbolic. First, the high priest had to bathe himself. This bathing of his body symbolizes baptism, baptism in water. Jesus had to be baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. See Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 7. 
At first, John didn't want to baptize Jesus because he, he thought he should be baptized by Jesus. But Jesus said, let it be so now because all things need to be fulfilled. So Jesus needed to be baptized in order to fulfill the scripture. Next, in order for the high priest to minister, he had to take off his fancy high priest garments and put on simple linen garments. He was still the high priest, mind you, just without the expensive and fancy high priest garb. That was what symbolized Jesus. Jesus, our high priest, he took off his godliness and put on the flesh to come and minister to mankind, giving himself as a ransom for many. We usually call two witnesses, but today we're going to use all three of our witnesses. Turn with me, please, to three portions of Scripture. John chapter 1, verse 1, and then we're going to skip down to verse 14. Romans 8, 3, and Philippians 2, 7 through 8. Now, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now turn with me, please, to Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin he condemns sin in the flesh. Now, our third scripture. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. But emptied himself, this is talking about Jesus, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Now what these scriptures are teaching us is, Jesus has always existed. He did not come into being at the virgin birth. He always existed with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As the older folks used to say, the Holy Ghost. Jesus, the second member of the Holy Trinity, took off his godliness and laid it aside and became flesh. Why? Turn to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 through 17. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Wow. Now, that can be a real mouthful. So let me break it down just a little bit for you. Because we... Mankind are made of flesh. Jesus had to become flesh. In, or, in, in other words, Jesus had to become a man to save man or to deliver man from his sins. He was still God and he could take up his godlyhood, his innate godlyhood, his godly attributes at any time that he wanted. But he chose to remain a man, just a mere man, with, with his godly attributes still there, but he, he chose to be function as a man, and he chose to die like a man in order to save man. He made himself a sacrifice in order to save us so that we might live, we might be able to live with him throughout all eternity. And for more or more of an in-depth study on why Jesus had to become flesh, see our kinsman redeemer in our nuggets of truth category. 
The link will be at the bottom. The high priest was to slaughter the bull as his sin offering for himself and shall make a tomb for himself and for his house or his family. The high priest had to place his hands on the head of the bull and confess the sins of, of himself, his own sins, and the sins of his family. Turn with me, please, to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 11 through 14. And we get a small little picture, a little snippet of what Aaron did. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall kill the bull as a sin offering for himself and he shall take a censer full of coals of fire from the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of sweet incense beaten small and he shall bring it inside the veil and put the incense on the fire before the Lord and the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is over the testimony so that he does not die. And he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat on the east side and in front of the mercy seat he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. The high priest would have to take a sharp knife, a very sharp knife, and he would have to slit the throat of the bull that he had just transferred the sins, his sins and the sins of his families onto by the laying on of his hands and the blood would gush out and he would have to catch that blood in a bowl. Doubtless to say that the blood splashed all over his hands and some of the blood splashed on his nice clean white linen robe. There were probably flies buzzing around and the smell of blood was thick in the air. This, this showed the people the raw, nasty horror of sin. It taught the people that sin was not some innocent white line that could be brushed or swept under the rug. Aaron took the blood and went into the Holy of Holies to minister, while Jesus, on the other hand, did not go into the most holy place with the blood of, of, of goats and, and bulls, but with his own blood did he go in. For it was his blood that made atonement for us all. The innocent for the guilty, the righteous for the unrighteous, the holy for the unholy. Jesus paid the price. He paid it all. Along with the blood, the high priest took with him a coal from the, the altar, an incense which he offered on the altar of incense. Now incense represents our prayers and Jesus did a lot of praying while he was on earth. He would get up early in the morning. When they couldn't find him, they went out searching. They would find him in his place of prayer, praying to the Father. He, he also interceded for us, which he still interceded for us even now. Look at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 through 10. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Then the high priest, Aaron, had to go in and select two goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. This offering was now for the whole of the Israelite community. One goat was chosen by a lot for Azazel, and the other was to be killed like the manner as the bull was. And the blood was taken into the most holy place and sprinkled seven times. Seven is the number of completion. Because once Jesus went in and he, he presented his own blood, it was finished. Everything was completed. There was no need for any further sacrifices. 
Let us see what the writer of Hebrews says when Jesus entered the Holy of Holies. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 14. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the Holy of Holies, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The high priest was to make atonement for the holy place. He was to make atonement for the tent of maiden, and he was to make atonement for the altar. Then after making atonement, he was to come and lay his hands on the head of the live goat, which was to be sent to Azazel, and confess all the iniquities, all the transgressions, and all the sins of the people of Israel. Then someone was appointed to take the live goat to a remote area in the wilderness and let him go. The goat was to bear all the iniquities on itself. This was fulfilled in Jesus. Let us turn our attentions to two witnesses who will bear witness that our sins was placed upon Jesus as he hung on the cross of Calvary. Isaiah prophesied this about the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, way before, several hundred years before Jesus was even born. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 through 6. He was despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And this is what Peter wrote after the death and resurrection of Jesus. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 through 25. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. After the release of the scapegoat, the high priest would come into the tent of Medan, or the temple when it was completed by Solomon, and he would take off the linen garments, and then he would bathe himself and put back on his regular priestly garments. And after the burnt offerings for himself and all the people. After Jesus had made atonement for us at the cross, he was to ascend to the Father. This is what he said to Mary when he rose on the first day of the week. Early that morning, Mary came looking for him and, and she couldn't find him. And this is what Jesus said. John chapter 20, verse 16 through 17. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus had not yet ascended to the Father, for it was still early, early in the morning. But he had put back on his godlyhood. He had put back on his godness. He was God again, never to die, never to be slapped, never to suffer again. He would once again function in the capacity of the second member of the Godhead. 
This second bath that the high priest had to perform represents the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This Wednesday, October the 5th, 2022, the Jewish people will celebrate Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It will be a solemn day for them, the holiest of their holy days. You know, I read a story on History.com's website. It, it talked about this baseball player, and this is what it says, and I quote, Hall of Famer Sandy Koufax, one of the most famous Jewish athletes in American sports, made national headlines when he refused to pitch in the first game of the 1965 World Series because it fell on Yom, Yom Kippur. When Koufax's replacement, Don Drysdale, was pulled from the game for poor performance, he told the Los Angeles Dodgers manager, Walter Alston, I bet you wish I was Jewish too. If Yom Kippur is that important to the Jews, how much more important to us should what Jesus did for us on Calvary, how he shed his own blood to make atonement for us. Because it was with his own blood that Jesus made atonement for each one of us. We don't look forward to this feast being fulfilled. It is fulfilled in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to live as though we have received this atonement. Have you received the atonement? Have you received Jesus as Lord and Savior by accepting his atonement for your soul? Jesus paid the price for you. Will you come? Will you be saved? Will you accept him in your heart today? If you would like to receive that free gift of salvation, that free gift of life, just pray this prayer with me. Just say, believe it in your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood for me, for giving your life that I might live. I accept it now, and I confess you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now what I want you to do is to get your Bible or if you don't have one, go and buy a Bible and read your scriptures every single day. Buy a highlighter and highlight those verses that are meaningful, the promises that mean something to you. And, and commit those to memory. Commit those to, to, and save them up in your heart so that when you're tempted, you can rely on those. You can draw them back to memory and do what Jesus did. He said, every time the devil uh, tempted him, he said, it is written. Now what I want you to do, the next thing is to find yourself a Bible-believing church and join that church. Be a part of that church. Work in that church. Be discipled in that church. But make sure it's not one of those progressive churches, but one of those churches that still believe that there's a right way to live and a wrong way to live and that they teach the righteousness and holiness of Jesus. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll take you to be with him that where he is, there shall you be also. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold to Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.